This is a grade 11 pre-calculus lesson on series. We are going to address four learning competencies here. First learning competency is illustrate a series. Series is a description of the operation of adding terms in a sequence. So there are two common representations. The first one is sum of the terms. So if we have the terms a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, and a sub 5, we just have to add all of them up. Specifically, if our terms are 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, so it's simply 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10. The other common representation is sigma notation. This is an example. This notation is read as sum of the terms 2n where n is from 1 to 5. So if we are going to substitute n with 1, that's 2 times 1, that gives us 2. If we substitute n with 2, that's 2 times 2, that is equal to 4. Then if n is equal to 3, so that's 2 times 3, that's 6. And if n is equal to 4, so that's 2 times 4 is 8. If n is 5, 2 times 5 is 10. So this notation here is actually equal to this notation also here, the 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10. The second learning competency is differentiate a series from a sequence. Sequence is a list of terms following a certain pattern. So for example, we have 5, 10, 15, 20. This is what we call arithmetic sequence. So the common difference here is 5, meaning to say, if we add 5 to the first term, that's 5 plus 5 equals 10. And then if we add 5 again to 10, that will be equal to 15. If we are going to add 5 again to 15, that will be equal to 20. Another example, 2, 6, 18, 54. This is what we call geometric sequence. The common ratio here is 3, meaning to say if we are going to multiply the first term by 3, that's 2 times 3, that will give us 6. Again, if we are going to multiply 6 by 3, it will give us 18. And multiplying 18 by 3, it will give us 54. This is the definition of series. It's the sum of the terms in a sequence. So we have here example number 1. If the terms are 5, 10, 15, and 20, if we add them up, so that's 5 plus 10 plus 15 plus 20, we now call it arithmetic series. Another example, if the terms in a sequence are 2, 6, 18, and 54, if we are going to add them up, that's 2 plus 6 plus 18 plus 54, this will become geometric series. The third learning competency is use the sigma notation to represent a series. Example number one, write the series in sigma notation. So we have here 5 plus 9 plus 13 plus 17 plus 21. 5 is our first term, 9 is our second term, 13 is our third term, and so on. Observing the pattern, we can say that there is a common difference of 4. So that means 5 plus 4 equals 9, 9 plus 4 equals 13, 13 plus 4 equals 17, 17 plus 4 equals 21. So if there is a common difference, it is what we call arithmetic sequence. And this is how to find the nth term in an arithmetic sequence. So we have a sub n equals a sub 1 plus the quantity n minus 1 times d. Now substituting a1 with 5 and t, the common difference with 4, we have this equation now. a sub n equals 5 plus the quantity n minus 1 times 4. And we can simplify this part here by applying distributive property of multiplication. 
that's 4 times n and 4 times negative 1. So we have a sub n equals 5 plus 4n minus 4. Now we can combine 5 and negative 4. So the simplest form is a sub n equals 4n plus 1. So this is the rule of our sequence. So to write this in sigma notation, this is how we do it. We write the rule here, 4n plus 1, and then we have here n equals 1, meaning to say n starts with 1, and the last value for n is 5, because we only need 5 terms. So this can be read as the sum of the terms 4n plus 1, where n is from 1 to 5. Example number 2. Write the series in sigma notation. 2 plus 10 plus 18 plus 26 plus 34 plus 42. Our first term is 2, second term is 10, the third term is 18, and so on. Observing the pattern, we can say that the common difference here is 8. That is, 2 plus 8 is 10, 10 plus 8 is 18, 18 plus 8 is 26, 26 plus 8 is 34, 34 plus 8 is 42. Since it has a common difference, it is again an arithmetic sequence. Substituting a1 with 2 and t with 8, this is our equation. a sub n equals 2 plus the quantity n minus 1 times 8. Now we can simplify this part, so that's 8 times n and 8 times negative 1. So we have a sub n equals 2 plus 8n minus 8. And we can combine 2 and negative 8. So the simplest form is a sub n equals 8n minus 6. Now this is the rule. So to write this in sigma notation, we write the rule here. 8n minus 6, and then the values of n start from 1, and the last value of n is 6, because we only need 6 terms here. Example number 3. Write the series in sigma notation. So we have 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32. So this is our first term, second term, third term, and so on. Looking at the pattern, we can say that the common ratio is 2. So that's 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. And if we have a common ratio, it's what we call geometric sequence. And this is the rule in finding the nth term in a geometric sequence. Now substituting a sub 1 with 2 and r with 2 also, so we have this. a sub n equals 2 times 2 to the power of n minus 1. So this is our rule. We can write it in sigma notation. So the rule is here. 2 times 2 to the power of n minus 1, where the value of n starts from 1 and the last value is 5 because we only need five terms. Example number four, write the series in sigma notation. So we have 4 plus 12 plus 36 plus 108. Now this is our first term, second term, third term, and of course this one is the fourth term. So looking at the pattern again, we can say that there is a common ratio of 3. So that means 4 times 3 equals 12, 12 times 3 equals 36, 36 times 3 equals 108. Now because there is a common ratio, it's a geometric sequence. So this is the rule in finding the nth term of a geometric sequence. That's a sub n equals a sub 1, times r to the power of n minus 1. Now substituting a sub 1 with 4 and r with 3, this will be our rule. a sub n equals 4 
times 3 to the power of n minus 1. Now since we already have the rule here, we can write it in sigma notation like this. So this is read as the sum of the terms 4 times 3 to the power of n minus 1 where n is from 1 to 4. Learning competency number 4. Apply the use of sigma notation in finding sums. So example number 5. Evaluate sum of the terms 3n plus 5 where n is from 1 to 6. Now substituting n with 1 so it's going to be 3 times 1 plus 5 that's 8. So substituting n with 2 so that's 3 times 2 plus 5 equals 11. Then 3 times 3 plus 5 equals 14. Then 3 times 4 plus 5 equals 17. And then 3 times 5 plus 5 equals 20. And 3 times 6 plus 5 equals 23. So these are the six terms. Now we are going to add them. And of course we know how to add uh, integers. So the sum here is 93. We actually have arithmetic series formulas. So this is the formula. S sub n equals n times the quantity of a sub 1 plus a sub n all over 2. Now substituting n with 6 because there are 6 terms. a sub 1 with 8 and a sub n with 23 we have this result. So sum of the six terms equals 6 times the quantity 8 plus 23 all over 2. And this is still equal to 93. Example number 6. Write the series in sigma notation and find the sum. So we have 5 plus 10 plus 20 plus 40 plus dot dot dot. Meaning to say there are other terms here that are not written that will just follow the pattern we have here. So looking at the terms we have 5, 10, 20, and 40, we can say that there is a common ratio of 2. So that's 5 times 2 equals 10, 10 times 2 equals 20, 20 times 2 equals 40, and so on. Since there is a common ratio of 2, this is actually a geometric series. Now to find the nth term in a geometric sequence, this is our rule. a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the power of n minus 1. Substituting a sub 1 with 5 and r with 2, we have this. a sub infinity equals 5 times 2 to the power of n minus 1. Why infinity? Because these three dots here means there are other terms here all the way to infinity. Now since we have the rule, we can now write it in sigma notation. So it looks like this. This is the rule. 5 times 2 to the power of n minus 1 where the value of n starts from 1 to infinity. So looking at the terms here, we can say that the next terms will become bigger and bigger and bigger. So because our series diverges, so there will be no sum. So it happens when our ratio is greater than 1. Example number 7. Write the series in sigma notation and find sum. So we have 24 plus 12 plus 6 plus 3 plus dot 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 again. So looking at the terms here, we can say that there is a common ratio of 0 0.5 or 1 half. So that means 24 times 0 0.5 is 12. 12 times 0 0.5 is 6. 6 times 0 0.5 is equal to 3 and so on. So again, since there is a common ratio, it's a geometric series. And again, this is the rule 
in finding the nth term of a geometric sequence. a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the power of n minus 1. Now substituting a sub 1 with 24, r with 0 0.5, and this subscript n here with infinity, this is what we get. a sub infinity equals 24 times 0 0.5 to the power of n minus 1. Writing this in sigma notation, this is what we get. 24 times 0 0.5 to the power of n minus 1, where n is from 1 to infinity. Now looking at the next terms here in our series, the next terms are becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. Actually, we have geometric series formula if our ratio is between negative 1 and positive 1. And this is the formula. S sub infinity equals A over 1 minus R. So our A here, or our first term, is 24 and our r is 0 0.5. Now 24 divided by 1 minus 0 0.5, that gives us 48. So this is our answer. Example number 8. Evaluate sum of the terms 2x squared plus 3x minus 4, where x is from 1 to 5. The terms we obtain from this rule will not be an arithmetic sequence and it will not be a geometric sequence either. The index of summation here is x, it's not n, meaning to say any letters can be used. So how do we evaluate this? To find the first term, we will just substitute all the x's we have here with 1. So that's 2 times the quantity 1 squared plus 3 times 1 minus 4, that gives us 1. So it's the first term. For the second term, we will just substitute all the x's we have here with 2. We have 2 times 2 squared plus 3 times 2 minus 4, and that will give us 10. So this is the second term. Now to find the third term, we will just substitute x with 3. So that's 2 times 3 squared plus 3 times 3 minus 4. That gives us 23. And then for the fourth term, we substitute x with 4, so that's 2 times 4 squared plus 3 times 4 minus 4, that gives us 40. The last term, we are going to substitute all the x's we have here with 5, so that's 2 times 5 squared plus 3 times 5 minus 4 equals 61. Now adding these terms up, this is our sum, 135. Thanks for watching, guys. This is Teacher Reggio. Keep safe.